Hello everyone, this is Jason Merkel with Horizon Hobby and I'm here today with the E-Flight UMX Ultrix. A really exciting product, uh, one of our first Ultra Micros in a long time. Um, and what's exciting about this is it's our most uniquely capable and also most durable Ultra Micro airplane yet. I'll speak to the durability first. This airplane is made out of EPP foam. Uh, in the past, our original Ultra Micros were EPS foam, very lightweight, but also could be broken relatively easily. Uh, and then we had EPO foam, which is a little bit more durable, of course, many people are familiar with that. But EPP foam is even more durable yet, a little more flexible, a little more bouncy, so to speak. Uh, perfect for an airplane like this because you can fly it somewhat aggressively and you might get into trouble, you might crash it every once in a while, but because of the foam, because of its lightweight, it is very durable. So speaking of lightweight, this airplane only weighs about 65 grams, less than two and a half ounces, ready to fly with the battery. Makes it very lightweight so you can fly it in small spaces. You know, we're here at a nice park today. We are flying over grass, uh, but I will point out that it does include this metal skid, which slides into a slot here on the bottom. And with that skid installed, you can, uh, you can basically take off and land on pavement or other smooth surfaces, but this helps protect the bottom of the airplane in case you are flying on a hard surface. Uh, but again, we're flying over grass today, which is perfect for this. Um, again, if you get in trouble and you crash, uh, grass is a lot more forgiving than uh, pavement is. Uh, so here is the battery. It's a 1S. 500 milliamp battery with the JST connector. So uh, that said, this is brushless powered. In the past, a lot of our 1S powered ultra micro airplanes were brushed motors. And then if it had a brushless motor, it used a 2S, a usually a 2S 200 to 280 milliamp battery. We did things a little different here. We wanted it to be a little bit simpler, a little bit easier to charge. There's a lot more 1S chargers, inexpensive, simple, low cost 1S chargers out there. Uh, all you need is a JST lead. You don't need a balance connector, a balance adapter, nothing like that. These batteries are somewhat common. Uh, many guys may already have them from uh, other air aircraft like uh, blade helicopters, the 120SR, the uh, 180QX quadcopter. So you might have some of these from years ago or from recently. Uh, and if you don't, they're very inexpensive, less than $10, and you get pretty good flight time, anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending on your flying style and how much throttle usage you use. Uh, what's nice is we've got a hatch here on the bottom. It's magnetically secured. The battery just slides into the slot. I already have my transmitter turned on, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and talk a little bit more about the features in the airplane. Easy to plug in that JST connector. I'm gonna slide the hatch back on. And there it is, holding the airplane level there. So I'm gonna set it down here in a minute to initialize it. Uh, but it is a four channel aircraft. You may not think that initially looking at it, but you've got throttle control, of course. You have elevons, which are your elevators and your ailerons. And then you also have differential thrust. So there's two brushless motors here with independent ESCs, and we have yaw control via thrust, you know, differential thrust. So that allows us to hover the airplane, allows us to harrier it around, allows us to do really cool flat spins. It's an element of control that a lot of uh, simple flying wings don't have, um, but because this is twin motor powered and we have those separate ESCs, we're able to do that. So very, very exciting feature. Uh, so you do need a minimum of a five channel transmitter to fly this airplane. Now you don't need any, anything exotic, the DXE will work, uh, DX6E of course, all the way up to the IX20. I'm using a DX8 today. I have the uh, AS3X and Safe Select assigned to a switch. Basically it's channel five. I've assigned it to switch B, which is what we typically recommend for most of our aircraft, and that's this switch here. And I've got it in three positions. When it's in the position all the way back, it's the safe mode, the safe select flight mode. In that flight mode, I have 100% high rates programmed to this switch. So that's something that we did recommend a little different in the manual for this airplane to keep it simple. We have your rates and your AS3X and safe select assigned to the same switch. You don't have to do it that way. You can assign your rates to a separate switch, independent switches for aileron, elevator, rudder. Some people do that, some people prefer that, or putting them all on one switch. I went ahead and combined them all like we recommend in the manual to keep things simple. So when I'm in safe, I have high rates. When I flip to the first AS3X position, I have AS3X with low rates. Then if I flip again, I have AS3X with high rates. So that allows me to do 3D aerobatics, really aggressive flat spins. The, the AS3X with low rates allows me to fly around smooth, do nice, easy loops and rolls. And then with safe and high rates, I can fly around very smooth and easy, but I can also do a somewhat aggressive aerobatics, even in the safe mode. We've opened up the flight envelope a little bit more on this model than we do with our typical uh, safe setups on most airplanes. Most of them, we don't allow you to do any aerobatics at all. Uh, we've opened things up on this, give it a little bit more pitch angle limit, a little bit more bank angle limit, and some yaw control, so you can do flat spins, you can do harriers, even with safe turned on. That part's really, really exciting. So for those that aren't familiar, really quick, Safe Select has pitch angle limits, so you can't get upside down, has bank angle limits, so you can't roll upside down, you can't push the nose into the ground, and when you let go of the stick, the aileron and elevator stick, 
it goes back to level on its own. So that makes it very easy to fly, even if you're an inexperienced pilot. Now this airplane isn't for a beginner, but if you've flown one or two models successfully, you can definitely fly this airplane in the safe select flight mode. Uh, and if you're an experienced pilot, you'll still enjoy it in the safe select flight mode as well. You'll see here in a minute. Um, but at the same time, you can assign it to a switch. You can turn safe off all the time. You can have safe on all the time. Uh, you can set it accordingly to your preference. So what I'm gonna do here first is I'm gonna fly it in the safe flight mode to start. Real quick, I'm gonna show you guys that at full throttle, that's with safe flight mode, full throttle. I just switched to AS3X at full throttle, and you can hear there's a difference in power. So in the safe flight mode, we did reduce the power a little bit to keep the overall top speed down a little bit so you can't get yourself into too much trouble. You don't cover as much ground. The nice thing about an ultra micro airplane like this is that you can fly it in a relatively small space depending on your skill level. If you're a really good pilot, you can fly it in an even smaller space. You can fly it indoors in a basketball gym if you're a skilled enough pilot. You know, that said, I'd recommend for your first few flights probably to go to a, a field that's a soccer field or two soccer fields or maybe a couple of baseball fields to start or of course your local flying field. Uh, but what's nice is that once you get used to flying this airplane, you can fly it in a lot smaller spaces and a lot more places than you can fly most airplanes. So to launch it, you can see I'm in the safe flight mode. I'm just gonna hold the nose up at a slight angle here. I'm gonna go to full throttle and I'm just gonna let go. That's it. It takes off, no problem. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throttle back to about half. And you guys probably noticed that it covered ground pretty darn quick. It's a very powerful airplane. It has brushless motors, two brushless motors powered by a 1S battery, but it has plenty of power. So right now I'm in the safe mode. Again, I have effectively high rates in the safe mode. And I'm flying around at half power. And I'm just banking right now, using the ailerons, letting go. It goes back to level on its own. Bank. Make a nice little simple turn here, let go. Turn some more very easy to fly this airplane in this flight mode. What I like about this aircraft is that you can fly it slow and smooth and easy and then you can turn things up with higher rates in the AS3X flight modes and you can do crazy aerobatics. But you can see in this safe flight mode is super smooth, super simple. There's a little bit of wind today but because we do have the gyros on board it keeps the airplane nice and smooth for us. Bring it by low here so you guys can see. So there it is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throttle up and I'm gonna go and do some aerobatics. I'm still in the safe flight mode. I'm at full throttle now. And you can see I've got the ailerons banked all the way over and it's doing a pretty tight turn. Now I'm gonna add rudder and it's doing a really cool flat spin in safe all by itself. And when I let go of the sticks, it just flies right out of it because I'm in the safe flight mode. Throttle back and come back by. I'm gonna show you guys that again. So I'm at full throttle. I'm gonna give it full aileron, full up elevator. And now I'm gonna add in right rudder with the right aileron and full up elevator. It just does a flat spin and I let go and it flies right out all by itself, no problem. So again, that's one thing we did a little different on this model is we gave it a little bit wider flight envelope in the safe select flight mode. So you could do simple aerobatics like that. One other thing I'm gonna show you guys in the safe flight mode is that you can actually harrier this airplane which is a, a 3D-esque maneuver. You can see I've got full up elevator and I'm just holding the nose up and I'm basically flying in high alpha in the safe flight mode, keeping it very simple. It's making it very easy for me. So if you've never done 3D flying before, if you've never done high alpha flying, you can kind of get used to this attitude of flying the airplane, this kind of these control inputs, whether it's a combination of aileron, and rudder to help turn the nose around a little bit tighter. So if you use just aileron, you can make somewhat tight turns, but if you add in a little bit of rudder, you can see now I can make tighter turns. And so this helps you practice for 3D flying that you'll do down the road in the AS3X flight mode, or if you're an experienced pilot, but you can do all of that in the safe flight mode, which is really easy, super simple. Now I'm gonna land it really quick in the safe flight mode to show you how simple that is. And then I'm gonna switch to AS3X and fly it that way for you. So I'm just gonna line it up here, throttle off. I'm, again, I'm in safe flight mode. I'm gonna point the nose where I want it to come into land. I'm gonna keep the throttle on just a little bit so I have good control. Now I'm gonna throttle off and just let it land. Very simple. So now I'm gonna switch to AS3X and I'm gonna launch it again, similar to how I launched it before. I'm gonna give it full throttle, actually a little less than full throttle because I'm just gonna go into a, a high alpha Harrier right off the of takeoff. So I am in the AS3X mode with high rates. Again, you can assign the rates to a separate switch. I just have it all on one switch right now. 
you can see with AS3X high rates, I can do high alpha flying, nice tight and close here. I can hover it with the nose up. Again, there's a little bit of a breeze here. AS3X keeping things smooth and simple for me. And then I can fly out vertical. You can see it has plenty of power to just climb out vertically, no problem. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to AS3X with low rates. And again, you can have that on a separate switch if you prefer. I'm just gonna fly it around nice and smooth just to show you guys some of its capabilities. So I'm at about half throttle now with AS3X and my low rates, which is about 70% travel on elevator, aileron, and rudder. And at half throttle, I can just pull full up and do a nice loop, no problem. Pull up, nice little loop. I can do rolls, very simple rolls, slow roll there. Just flying around at half throttle, keeping it simple. You can do basic aerobatics. So if you're not an extremely skilled pilot, you'll enjoy doing basic aerobatics, probably with low rates. Very simple. You can fly it inverted, of course. No problem. Roll back upright. I'm gonna switch back to now AS3X with high rates. And I'm gonna show you guys how crazy this airplane can be on high rates and crazy in a good way. It's very, very capable. You can do extreme aerobatics. For example, I'm gonna go full throttle and just give it full aileron. Look at how fast it rolls and I'll let go and I'll pull out of that. Super good roll response. Look at the elevator. When I pull full up, you can see it basically just whipping itself around. No problem. You can do that even inverted with down elevator. So again, I'm in high rates, which is 100% travel on ailerons and elevator and uh, rudder as well. And then also in high rates, you can do these really cool flat spins. I'm just gonna go full throttle and I'm gonna give it full left rudder. That's all I've done, giving it full left rudder. Look at that, incredible. Come out of that, if I let go of the rudder, it will basically snap out of that flat spin more or less on its own because the AS3X gyros get it back on track. Very, very, very cool. Very simple to do those aggressive aerobatics. And again, on top of that, you have the ability to do high alpha, to hover. Roll inverted, you can do inverted Harriers, no problem. And one big thing to point out is that because we have differential thrust, we are able to do these kind of really tight turns in high alpha because we effectively have that rudder control. And now I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna show you one of my favorite maneuvers, something I've always done with 3D airplanes, and this airplane actually does it pretty darn well. I'm gonna do a blender. So I'm gonna climb some, gain some altitude here. I'm gonna point the nose straight down, full left aileron, and full down elevator and left rudder with aileron, and look at that. Right into a blender, and right out of it as soon as I release the controls. Super simple, super fun at the same time. Really cool, an incredible airplane, very unique with a, an extremely wide flight envelope. It's Pretty darn easy to fly, especially in the safe flight mode. And then even for an experienced 3D pilot, you can also fly it aggressively. You can fly aggressive aerobatics, you can fly even 3D aerobatics. Pretty darn impressive. Show you some more of those flat spins. Just full right rudder, goes right into it, no problem. It does tend to go inverted if you use just rudder. So if I use a combination of, of up elevator and rudder, I can get into an upright flat spin. And again, I love that it comes right out of that when you neutralize the controls, the gyros get everything back on track. As long as you keep the throttle up, if you lower the throttle all the way, the airplane doesn't have the ability to use yaw control to get you out of certain maneuvers. So we are hitting LVC now, low voltage cutoff. So I'm gonna go ahead and land really quick, but that's it guys. The E-Flight UMX Ultrix, again, probably our most unique, most outrageously capable UMX yet. Very simple airplane, very durable airplane, available at a great price, and it will be available now. Thank you.